going to tie into our class, all right? So I'm going to borrow Raul. Um, so my training partner is on his knees. I'm look, obviously, uh, when, I'm, when I'm playing butterfly guard, I'm looking to get like chest to chest. So whether that's an underhook and an overhook, or maybe double unders but against like a good like opponent, that can be very hard. All right, so I'll just spin you around this way here. So what I want to do is try and bring my hands underneath my uh, opponent's armpits. And just as a warm up, I'm going to scoop my hips underneath my opponent's hips, get his hands to the floor. I'm going to get heavy hands and light feet. So I'll show you and then I'll talk you through it again. So here, that's all we're going to do. So again, so we're going to use this as a warm up. So butt scoot in, take C grips on the armpit, reinforce it with your elbows onto your knee. Watch the way I shoot my hips under my opponent's hips and I kind of go with like a rounded back. Here. Alright, this is going to make it very easy for us to start switching the leg lock. So one more time. So my training partner's on his knees. Your elbows are in nice and tight. But obviously, if this is a, or like a, a live situation, we use collar ties and grips and that. But just for the warm-up to get used to it. C grips on the armpit. Reinforce your elbows with your knees. And then scoot your butt under your opponent's hips. And get all the way onto the hands. Alright. So we're going to go four or five goals back and forward and we bring it back in. All right, three, two, one. Does anyone have any questions or we're all good? All right, so I managed to get my feet in between my opponent's knees. I get my C grips. We can obviously do the, uh, the same elevation with any type of grip. I just find Against a good opponent, it can be hard to get chest to chest. So we managed to get these C grips. The trick is, don't lift with your head or with your legs. Try and get your hips under your opponent's hips. All right. Common mistake here: what people do is they try and lift with their legs. What we want to do is put the hips underneath. All right. So our first entry is going to be reverse X to the saddle. So I'm going to use my left hand to go to my opponent's armpit. The back of my right hand goes to the inside of my opponent's left knee, and I turn to 90 degrees. See why I'm shelving the leg with my right leg. I'm going to stop the drill here and then we'll, we'll do the finish, but it kind of looks like this. Here, all right, we want to add a few details in on the finish. So again, <clears throat> so C grips, reinforce your elbows with your knees, hips under your opponent's hips. Here, left hand goes to the far armpit, palm facing the ceiling. The back of my hand goes to the inside of my opponent's knee and I turn to 90 degrees. That's all we're going to do. Once it again. That's good. So one more time. So butt scooting in. Elbows are reinforced on our knees. Hips under our opponent's hips. Hand goes to the far armpit. Palm facing up towards the ceiling. The back of your hand goes to the inside of your opponent's knees. And then we turn to 90 degrees. And I bring my right leg to the far side. All right. Three, two, one. under the armpit, reinforce our frames, which are our arms, our elbows with our knees, scoot our hips underneath. I turn to 90 degrees, hand goes to the back of the knee, my right leg goes from the inside to the outside. All right, so the next thing we want to do is flex our feet. My right leg extends, so does my left leg. My left leg is going to drag. Once my opponent's right knee goes below my uh, right knee, I triangle my legs, and we bring him into the saddle, all right? So again, all the way on the hand, so just while we're practicing, it should look like this. So anyway, I'm kind of holding them up with, with my legs. Hand goes to the armpit, palm facing up towards the ceiling, right hand goes in, and as we turn to 90 degrees, my right leg goes from the inside to the outside. See where now I have like a scoop grip here. I extend my legs, my left leg, which is the inside leg, drags with the heel, when my opponent's right knee goes below my knee, I try my legs and break them down to the mat. All right, so what we're, what we're gonna add in here is, don't let go of the grip, bring your left hand in, and then your right hand over, and then I'm gonna play foot to foot. So again. So we're here, gone to 90 degrees, right leg goes from the inside to the outside, Extend your legs, left leg drags, 
Once his knee goes below my knee, I try my legs, break him down to the mat. Left hand in first, right hand over, foot to foot, I'm ready to start attacking. All right, three, two, one. When you're, when you're in the saddle position, uh, like a good kind of tip is, the closer you are to your hip or your opponent's hip, the more control you're gonna have, right? So we wanna use the reaping leg as much as we can. So this is just a little drill to get you used to controlling with the reaping leg. So a lot of people get fixated on just grabbing the heel, but if you lose the reaping leg, you freeze his knee, he's gonna escape. So a nice little drill, grab the knee, go hip to hip, and then I'm gonna uh, see the way my, my hips are facing away from my opponent, I'm gonna to start to turn back in, but what do I do with my left knee? I go to here, all right? The whole idea with this is, I don't want my opponent to get his hips higher than mine, because if he can get his hips higher than mine, or he can get weight on his feet, now he's gonna to start to like, uh, maybe get like a cross face, or you know, like an underhook, and maybe pass and kind of crush me from there. So, nice and simple, I turn here, we take the second leg, so this is just a drill to get you used to flaring that reaping leg. So my training partner is gonna try come up, so a lot, see the way now he's trying to get his hips higher, he's trying to put weight on his legs. So what I want you to do is try and grab the far hand, see here, try and grab the far hand, and we break him back down to the floor. <laughs> and he gets a mission there, <laughs> he's not wearing a brain guard. That's why he always wears a brain guard. So again, so just let go of the leg just for the drill, hip to hip, and then on the way back in, keep turning that knee down. All right, so we take the second leg, training partner's just gonna try, come up on top, here, if I can, a couple of different options, I can try and grab the, say the wrist here, break them down. If I can't do that, what I'll do is I'll extend my legs to bring them back to the floor. So that's why we do hip to hip. So that's one of the reasons. So again, hip to hip, turn, shin goes down, grab the second leg, he tries to come up. Here, so I'm trying to grab that, maybe I can't grab it now. Extend your legs and break them back, or back down to the floor. All right, so a couple of goals, we'll bring it back in. Three, two, one. If, you, if, you, if you've any questions, you can ask now, or if I'm going around, you can ask me, right? I have a question. When, when I'm staying on the right, it tends to come too far forwards, yeah. and then I can't, I lose him either this side or too far forwards right. for getting that into the sand. Right. Do you want to show us and then you might? <laughs> Yeah, you see I've lost them already, so it's hard to get that leg in. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's why I like to go to here, and then I can grab the legs. See the way my patch does? Because you're getting the knee, yeah. it's not going too far. Like, maybe like if he, if he manages like the previous leg, he stands out here. You can always go back to single leg X. If he tries to come back up on top of me again, I can go back into yeah. the saddle as well. So, it, like it's always changing as well, it depends on like, you know, the reactions that yeah. like, he, he gives you. Does that make sense? So yeah, you can keep that, so that near leg uh, kind of stay attached to it. So. Um, right, so the reason why we're working the, the belly down saddle, so if you want to come around this side and... The reason that we're going to... I'll show you the belly down saddle first for anyone that doesn't know. So this is regular saddle here. You've seen, a lot of you might have seen this where loads of heel hooks and everything you can get from here. Um, the belly down saddle looks like this. So it's here, all right? And the reason why, one of the reasons why I like to, I like to play regular saddle and belly down saddle. The reason I like belly down saddle is, like a lot of people are after getting like, really good at defending like heel hooks in the saddle. So if I release my training partner's leg, and I try to go for the heel, he's gonna put weight on the foot, he's gonna frame, and he's gonna free his knee and run. All right, and there is counters and ways to stop that. But if I play a belly down saddle and I release the leg, if he tries to run, you can see it's a lot harder. I have weight on his leg. And now it's easier for me to get the heel. So the way we're gonna go from regular saddle, we'll, we'll go over we're going from regular saddle to belly down saddle, right? Left hand goes through, palm facing up towards me. See the way I'm like using the crease of my elbow, so I'm not grabbing up my hand, going nice and deep. And then what's the way I bring his bottom leg towards me? So I'm just gonna lift my knee up and come to here. You can join your hands or you can leave your hands like this. So again, 
We have that footlock grip. Hand goes inside the second leg. The first leg is the one where we want to heel hook. Some people say primary and secondary and that type of stuff. So first and second leg. Hand goes in, elbow deep, palm facing you. Try to bring your hand as close as you can to your chest. And then to get this leg without kind of uh, losing any control, I just bring my knee up towards my chest. All right, now a trick here. The reason I like to go foot to foot, it's very easy for me to bring my right foot behind my left heel. And then all we're gonna do is a grappler's get up. All my weight goes to my, my head, and then I put the rest of my weight towards my left knee. So you can see my head, my knees, and my toes are on the mat, so I have good base here. So again, so with the foot lock grip, hand goes in, elbow deep. Try to bring your hand as close as you can towards your chest, like you're doing a bicep curl. The knee that's on the bottom, bring that up towards your chest as well. And then we grab that leg. So this is the grip. Hands here on the second leg, hands here on the first leg. So in, knee up, foot behind your heel. Big detail, because it can be hard to, to get up here. And I send all my weight towards my head. Once my head touches the floor, I send the rest of the weight to my left knee, and then we're ready to start attacking. All right, three, two, one. Uh, don't be afraid to ask. So, um, we've got to the saddle. We're playing like prayer feet position. So you can you can obviously do triangle legs, cross feet, whichever you prefer. I prefer this uh, this here because I get more control. If my opponent tries to put weight on his feet, and get his hips higher than mine. All right, so we could just or just do that one more time. We try to come up on top. If I can grab the elbow or the hand, great. If I can't, extend your legs. I'm breaking down to the mat, so that's why I like to play foot to foot. And I can also bring my right foot behind my left heel, like fairly easy. So left hand goes in, elbow deep, right hand goes in, elbow deep, see where I'm using the knee, or the knee to bring the leg up to my chest. My foot goes behind my heel, I send all the way to my head. When my head touches the floor, I then put the rest of my weight on my opponent's knees. So what we do here is, so I'm just going to sit up so you can see it, right? More than likely, your opponent's legs are going to be crossed. They're either going to be crossed and kind of like keeping them kind of curled or crossed and extended. All right, so straight legs. So if you just kind of cross your feet here, so if his legs are bent, I'm going to go for a heel hook. If his legs are straight, I'm going to maybe like try go for a heel hook. If I can't bend his leg, I'm going to switch to a knee bar. So we can do the heel hook first, right? Inside heel hook. So head is going to be on the floor, hand goes in. So I'm just going to sit up so you can see it. Hand goes in. Elbow splits the legs, what we do is we start to slide back. Alright? So to expose the heel, what we do is we do an elbow on the knuckle of his toe. So I'm turning back here and a big detail to bend the leg. Watch the way my bicep connects to the sole of his foot here. Alright? So I'll do that. I know you can't see it, but I'm gonna do it from the belly down position. I'll come back up. So his feet are across, elbows come in. I turn, so see I'm turning the toes, and then bicep connects to the sole of the foot. Here. Right, the trick to get a tight finish is knees out nice and wide, head slides away. I'm going to take a wrist to wrist grip and nice and easy, I sprawl to get the tap. All right. Um, if I kind of keep my knees close together and my head to the floor, you can see it's hard for me to sprawl my hips. Or if I bring my knees apart and I bring my head away from my hips, it's easier for me to sprawl. So again. So we're here, belly down position. So I'll do it when I'm sitting up so you can see it. His legs are crossed, left hand goes through, right elbow splits the legs, and I slide back. Once I separate the legs, I, I kind of do a back elbow on the knuckle of the big toe here, and then, big detail, bicep connects to the sole of the foot here, all right? The grip I'm gonna take is a wrist to wrist grip. So see where I'm going? wrist to wrist, and then I wrap my hands around. You can also do a, a gable grip, and there's a few different grips you can do. I just kind of find this one uh, works well for me. So the way it looks when I'm in the belly down position, hand goes in, I split the legs, back elbow, bicep goes onto the sole of the foot. See the way I'm bending the leg, and I'm putting the rest of the weight onto that left knee here. I take a wrist to wrist grip, my knees go wide, my head goes out, 
and then I hip in to get the tap. So if you haven't done any heel hooks, go nice and easy on this. And if you're getting heel hooked, tap early. All right, three, two, one. different ways uh, we can we can come into the saddle so all the way onto the hands left hand goes uh, to the armpit palm facing towards the ceiling my right hand goes in the knuckles are kind of connected to the inside of his knee when I take my right leg out then I turn to 90 degrees and I'm going nice and deep with this grip there's different options as well some people like to take a, a like an overhook grip I like that as well but um, for now we, we'll use this one so I extend my right leg my left leg drags a big detail actually if i leave this grip like if i just let this go my opponent can start to square up and then he can get like a cross face and pass so don't give up that frame so we're here if he tries to turn back into me it should be a lot harder all right so extend your legs and get used to doing like a like two different types of pressure i'm kind of like pinching my legs together all right because there's a few there's a few uh, counters you can do which we're going to work on friday morning so i drag with my left heel and i extend my right leg his knees now below my knee. I can either, if, now that you're used to it, I can go foot to foot or triangle and then change foot to foot. So spin you around here. So I have this grip, hand goes in, take my foot lock grip, or we can go straight to the grip we're using. My right foot goes behind my left heel, so my left leg is my reaping leg. All the way goes to my forehead, to this position here, and then I bring the rest of my weight to my left knee. A little detail, your left hand is going to be on the inside of the second leg. Watch what I'm doing with my elbow. I'm kind of like, like pressing in with my elbow to keep space so I can fit my elbow inside. Once this happens, I back heel on the knuckle of the big toe, my bicep connects to the sole of his foot and I bend the leg and I put, like slide my knee down towards my opponent's hip. All right, so we can go butterfly grip, knees go out wide, head goes forward, and hips follow to get the tap. Um, I also use the belly down saddle position just to get the heel, all right? So maybe I might come up into this position, maybe I have a very strong opponent, I get the heel, I just, for whatever reason, I'm not able to finish it, but then what I'll do is, I'll go with a false grip, and I'll go back to the regular saddle, I'm gonna put the heel on the floor, and I'm gonna put my chest over my opponent's leg. And I'm gonna bring my left hand on his knee. My left knee is flared, my left hand is pulling his knee away from the direction he wants to run. So he wants to run this way. So knowing that, left knee is flared, left hand pulls the knee away from the direction that he wants to escape. I have my heel, my, uh, my first grip, so my, the heel is exposed. I have a false grip here, and his heel is touching the floor. Anytime I get a chance to bend his leg, I'm always gonna do that, all right? Because if his leg goes straight, it's easier for him to slip the heel. So try keep the leg bent, and try keep the weight on the heel. So just with your training partner, play around with taking the weight off the heel, without the heel on the mat, so you can kind of move better, and then keeping your chest over, over on the, the leg, keeping the heel to the mat. This leg is flared, so if he tries to, tries to move or escape, I get good power here. He should be able to finish it with one hand, all right? So we'll do that one more time. So same setup. We're here, my left elbow is like pushing in towards the first leg, right elbow goes in, splits the legs, elbow goes on the knuckle of the big toe, bicep goes to the sole of the foot, and I watch the way I send all the way over towards my left knee. Now what we do is we fall back and keep all the weight on the heel. So if he tries to escape, it should be very hard. All right, three, two, one. That's There's loads of little details here, right? I'm trying to fit into an hour class. So Friday morning, we'll, we'll build on this, and if you're around, and we'll, we'll, we'll add some different entries as well. A really important detail is, like, if, you wanna, if your opponent's leg goes straight, it's gonna be a lot easier for him to escape. So bend the leg, adjust, like adjust any time you're in it, if you feel that, don't, don't force it. If the leg is straight, don't force it. Bend it again. So if I need to like adjust, like, Little things, if he's here, he's putting the foot to the floor, I bring the knee up and you know, I'll try to catch it. 
But the movement that I want you to get to expose the heel is this. So turn, and once I turn, watch where my bicep goes, onto the sole of the foot. See how bent the leg is. So when my opponent tries to escape, it should be a lot harder. If, if it goes straight, he can slip it. All right, so that's, a, that's an important movement. That's a good drill you can do. So back heel, so he maybe he's pointing his toes here. So I'm just gonna go this direction. Bicep goes to the sole of the foot. Now the leg is bent. To know that you've good pressure on it, your opponent should kind of like feel that they have like pins and needles in their feet. So see the way I'm covering. So if I was like actually trying to finish here, my head would be down low, trying to cover the foot with my right peg and my left peg, and then we can finish from here. All right. So about two minutes left. Has anyone got any questions on the saddle or anything that we've done today? Or no? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you can actually just show without using your whole body, just like the exact like motion of how you're trying to like what you're trying to rip off of this body. Yeah. Like, so without your body being wrapped around it, I mean just like with your hands, I am just like pulling in the way that you're trying to. I don't really understand what pressure you're. Yeah. So I'm going like if you so your left foot goes to the floor, flare your left knee, right foot pushes off my left ankle. I'm raising my hips, and the way it would look without the heel is this. Here, see the way my hips are up, and I'm kind of looking over my right shoulder. Here, yeah, but is the objective to like snap his knee, his MCL? So I want to bridge through the MCL to the inside of his knee. Here, and like if he's lucky, the ankle will probably go first. So sometimes you so can be the ankle. I'm not really trying to rotate. All I'm trying to think of like a, an arm bar, like using your hips. And then I'm going long through my spine and my head starts to extend. Nearly like a, like a mounted guillotine. So, okay. so you know when you get like a mounted guillotine, you go here and then you look over our shoulder here so make yourselves long. All right. Um, any other questions? No? Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. Well done. Thanks for listening to me.